Bobby Jensen here. We're gonna do an internal video for Breen Marine. We're over on the White Marine a lot. What we're gonna do is we're gonna figure out what's called what on a boat. The traditional terms for things, some of the newer terms for things. And as we go here, I'll probably miss some of the things we're called and we'll wanna add them in later so you'll see them on the screen. We'll have Jackson infuse those into the video as well. Uh, so if I'm missing and miss a name, maybe I'll give it a second after I'm done while I'm walking to the next part of the boat, or then you'll be able to you'll be able to uh, or see that added on the screen. So we're just gonna start the, the, the trailer area first. We'll go across the trailer, then we'll hop up to the boat, okay? And then we'll hit the motors uh, last. So right here, this is called the coupler. All the trailers have it. This is the coupler latch. Coupler, coupler latch. This has got surge brakes on it. They're called surge brakes. Uh, what happens is it compresses and it adds, it pushes the fluid down. Uh, these have a brake lockout, so there's something called a brake lockout on most trailers. There's a, a brake lockout. Uh, this is a safety brake lockout, where if you're going along, it fell off, this pulls it, and it locks the brakes up. Uh, you have your safety chains right here. You always crisscross them when you're doing them. You always lay one on opposite sides, so if it fell off, it would cradle it and catch it. Uh, this is the coupler pin, coupler latch pin. Okay, so that's already a lot of stuff. Uh, inside here, you see there's a blue wire here, and that is the that is the brake lockout solenoid. It's electronic. It goes from this extra lead here on the light plug. I guess that would be light plug. Yeah. You have your jack. All right. You have your. I would call these more not a marker light. They are kind of a marker light, but they're more of a tongue light. Uh, you could just do them as, as either or. This component here, going up here, is called the stanchion, the bow stanchion. And so that's what a lot of people call that. And this is also part of that with the bow roller. This is the bow eye on the boat. Since we will be inside the boat, we won't probably see this. So this is the bow eye. These are the, this is the safety chain, the boat safety chain. The winch, winch handle is the two speed winch because it goes into gear, uh, it has a high gear and a low gear. So you have a two speed winch on here. So this is the winch strap, winch handle of course. Uh, while we're out here too on this boat, this is the anchor pulpit or the anchor stanchion or anchor, anchor cradle. Um, I think those are pretty much all of them I can think of. Obviously the bow, the bow entry, this is the chine. I'm going to show you this since we're outside of the boat here. This is the chine of the boat. See, this is a full chine. This is always chine extended to the bow of this lip here. And this is a reversed chine. The angle that this goes down here, this is the entry angle. And that is, a, that is the dead rise. This one right here, I believe, is like 60 degree dead rise right here on the entry. Then it will flatten at the back. That's called a modified V. Remember that word, modified V, because it transitions. It's not the same, it's not the same dead rise through the whole boat. It, it, it changes as it goes. Uh, cross members on the trailer. These are the cross members. These are the bunks. These are the bunk brackets. Cross members go across. Bunks bunk glides on top if you have rollers here instead of a bunk it's a roller trailer clearance mark clearance marker lights right here on the front these are LED lights this here is the fender of the trailer here obviously tire the inner parts of the wheel and the inside here this is called the hub this is an oil bath hub. All hub bearings have to have some type of lubrication. Let me make your hand off the microphone. Oh, is that it? Awesome. Next is your lug nuts and your lug bolts. And this is the valve stem, valve stem cap to fill the air into the tire. Tire. Uh, inside of there, you can see this has disc brakes. If you look inside, there's a brake inside of there. And then inside of there, on top of that disc, you can see here, it's kind of hard to see, there's a caliper, and that has a brake pad inside of it. OK, 
okay, going on to the back. These are your tail lights. And on tail lights, there's two things to remember. One is if it's a wider, a wide tail like this, it's an over 80 inch trailer. If it's a square, it's for, it's for under 80 inch trailers. Another other thing to identify an 80 over 80 trailer is if you look in the back, you have a strip that has three lights underneath on the trailer. You see that strip with three lights, right? there okay that's also an indicator it's called indicator light for three uh, with the three lights in it and that tells you you're over 80 inch wide trailer and so other people know what it's going on for your typical tail lights they have the brakes and they have the the uh, running lights built into one light the other lights all come on when you're in running light mode okay let's go ahead and transition over to the boat Sit. Loading ladder, ladder, I don't know what else you call it, boarding, there you go, it's actually called a boarding ladder. This is your boarding ladder. Now on this boat, you have a bracket that we kind of refer to as many things. We'll call it a motor bracket, we'll call it an offshore bracket, we'll call this one, which is technically an extended transom. Okay, this one's not an offshore bracket. What determines that is if you look underneath here on the bottom of the boat, this is a continuation of the hull. You see the hull goes all the way to the back. If this came up right here and cut off, then this would be an offshore bracket, not an extended transom. Okay, extended transom is where the transom extends. That's what you've got here. Okay, let's, uh, what do you got? Oh, yeah, this is, this is a good one you point out. This is a scupper. Okay, you see it has a little ball in there? This is for a, this is for what we call a self-bailing deck. A self-bailing deck means the water will run out. This is below the water line a little bit here. The water line's right about here, but water will run out. If you get water on the deck, it'll run out of these. And these ping pong balls just seal it off so water doesn't go in. And then you've got your trim tabs. These are trim tabs, these are electric trim tabs. Trim tabs. Let's go on in. This is the transom. Remember the transom. This is an anode right here, meant for keeping the uh, electrolysis from eating the boat. It'll attack that first. And let's go on inside. This is called a transom door or a walkthrough transom. This here is called a cleat. This is a cleat, this is a mega cleat here. This is your fuel fill. So that's where you put fuel in the boat, fuel fill. This is called a transom. This is the transom fish box. Now, say this thing filled with water and had a drain and had a pump that put water into it, it would become a live well. Right now it's a fish box or a transom fish box. Okay, the width of the boat from side to side is the beam of the boat. Uh, let's see, the top here, this is called the gunwale or gunwale, W-A-L-E, not W-E-L-L, gunwale. And also, we call this the gunwale a lot of times too. All of this from the inside up to the very top, we refer to often as the gunwale. This here is a grab handle. I don't know what you call those ones. Uh, this is a, uh, a downrigger bracket on here. That's where you mount downriggers, put rod holders and other things on them. That's what we refer to as. Uh, this is the deck. This is the aft. Remember the aft is in the back of the boat. So the aft is towards the transom here. This is aft, forward, and midship. So if I'm in the middle, I just say midship. M-I-D, midship. Okay, inside here, different components here we have referred to as your battery switches these cut power to everything except for the bilge pumps these should kill everything pretty much you have your battery battery terminals battery bracket or mounting bracket or tray is what we usually call it and that's what mounts the battery to the boat battery cables and battery leads go to supply that power okay Transom lat or I mean trans latches, door latches. 
Uh, this is called a a deck access. Oh shoot, I forgot what you call them. 100%. These allow you to get in underneath the deck. And you have one here that's for your fuel. In your fuel tank, you'll have a fuel pickup where the pickup is pulled out of the fuel. You'll also have the fuel the the fuel sending unit. There's a sending unit, it's a component that tells the gauge how much fuel is inside the tank. More fish boxes, deck fish boxes. If we look up here, here this is a second helm because we have a helm forward and one aft or one here out on the deck. This one's the second hairy helm right here. Steering wheel. Um, throttles or controls, refer to them as your controls. These are a binnacle control because they're mounted this way. If you have one mounted to the side, like a 703 on a Yamaha, that one is, uh, is non-binnacle. I don't know what to call it. It's just controls, side mount controls. These ones are called binnacle controls. You have a safety lanyard switch and your key, your ignition switch right here. Safety lanyard is the little red thing that comes from you. Okay, these are your switch panels here. This is a switch panel. This is another fish box in the floor. These are deck lights. We, call, we just call them deck lights. A lot of people, when you see rocket launchers, these are rocket launchers. Or fishing rod holders, or, hey, I don't know. Come up with them. Everybody refers to them as rocket launchers for the most part. Oh, on this boat. The small motor is called the kicker, or tr but we gotta be careful because trolling motors are electric. And a lot of people are putting electric motors on the bow, and that's a, a, called a trolling motor as well. So a lot of people get those confused. So we try to use the word kicker, kicker motor, for, the, um, for a fuel-powered transom mount or a trolling motor for a bow mount electric motor. So we don't get them confused when we're talking about them. Okay? This area, if you have, if you have a solid back instead of like a drop cloth, if you have a solid back, that boat right there, that's a drop cloth. That's called a hard top. Okay, you see how that one has the entire enclosure, but it has a soft back? That is called a hard top. This one is called a pilot house. And the reason so is because it's more of a house, it's solider. This is a bulkhead. So this filled in instead of a curtain is bulkheaded. So you'll have, it's not a pilot, or it makes it a pilot house too. So your term goes to pilot house instead of hardtop. Okay, because that one doesn't have the bulkhead, this one does. So this is a pilot house and it has a bulkhead. Going inside here, you'll have your bench seats. Uh, storage compartments, anywhere that you can stash stuff as a storage compartment, where it's located, you can kind of figure that one out. You have suspension seat bases, or suspension seats, shock mitigating seats, somebody call them, calls them that. Uh, air ride sheets, even though they are not air ride, a lot of people refer to them as air ride seats. Okay, cabin light, what else? You've got your, let's see here. This is a helm, this is the main helm, or the helm. You've also got your controls here, and everything else we've already covered pretty much. Here's your trim, tra trim tab controller, okay. This up front is called, if it has a cab, or if it has a bed in it, it's called a berth. So on a boat, it's called a berth. Okay, so this is, this is the cuddy because it's under the bow portion. This is not, the whole part of here is not called the cuddy. If it's a boat that has a, a open, or a, if the bow is closed and you can go inside there, it's called a cuddy cabin. And then you have a V berth in there because it's shaped at the V, the v, bow of the boat. That's the V berth. This is a pump out head. So toilets are called heads in a boat. And this one is a pump out. You see how it has a pump and it has a holding tank in the boat. That's a pump out head. Uh, glove box, just like it would be on a car. Grab handles. I 
think for the most part we've got that. Um, you've got your bow rails outside there. You can see the bow rails. Uh, let's see. I forgot what we call this. I just the the flip up uh, lid here. Uh, the hatch. That's what you call a hatch. This part right here on the ground. The hatch, and then in forward of that, you can't really see it. This one's got an anchor locker. So there's a little opening door up there where you put the anchor road. That's the that's the anchor locker there. And then you see a bow roller there on the front where I covered that. Okay, let's go over here. Uh, on a different boat, if you look at that boat over here, that boat, let me get it hold still, that's a soft top, canvas top, full enclosure, call it a full enclosure a lot of times. This is the walkthrough windshield. This is a windshield boat. This boat right here, down here, this is referred to as an open boat. And that does not have a console in it, you grab it by the handle on the motor, so it's a tiller steer boat that boat over here this is a center console because it does have a console and you run it from up front here that's a center console open boat if it had a little bracket with a cover on the top that would be a t-top usually this boat down here is a drift boat drift boats are usually uh, for rivers and you can and they come with oars and you can add a little motor to the back they're a little bit different. A lot of call, people call them sleds too. If it's called a sled because they'll jump in the boat and slide down the mountain down into the water. They're pretty hardcore guys that run those. And then you just back paddle the whole way down the river and then you hitchhike to get back up to your boat and trailer. Um, we didn't get the navigation lights. Let's get those. If you look up on top of this boat, you see that light right there. Oh, here. See this light right here? That's your navigation light. That's your all around or your anchor light. So you have an anchor light and then you'll have a, on the, this is the starboard side of the boat where you typically in the US, all boats are driven on the starboard side. The port side is where most of your passengers ride. So that's your port side. If you're facing the boat like this, starboard's to my right, port's to my left. Starboard port. The starboard light is always green on your navigation lights. It's always green. Your port light is red. That'll tell you what direction the boat's going. If you can't even tell what way the boat's going, that just by what light you can see. If you can see light and green, you know a boat's coming right at you. If you or, or red and green. And if you see only green, then you know the boat's going gonna go from light, left to right on your on your uh, in front of you. got what on the top of this boat we've got what we call this bar up here that not that bar the one in front there you go that's your radar arch or radar tower or radar I don't know free radar and other electronics antennas and stuff like that it goes for antennas and things like that all right let's go to the motors Let's go right here real quick. These are your hydraulic lines and your rigging lines. This is a, a rigging conduit, rigging hose. I always call it vacuum hose because it's just the same size. These are your hydraulic lines. This is a through hole fitting. Now this is your, this here is your hydraulic steering cylind cylinder. So that's what steers the boat. That's your steering cylinder, your hydraulic steering cylinder. Let's get down here a little bit more and we'll show you this. Your motor flush, the motor flush here, you can stick the hose on it. You hook this up to your garden hose and this is a back flush uh, motor flusher here. So you don't run your motor when you hook up to this, you just hook it up to your garden hose. And then it'll back flush the motor for you. 
This here is called the pilot tube. This is going up and down. This is the pilot tube on the motor and it steers right to left with that one. This is the tilt tube. This allows the motor to pivot up and down. That's the tilt tube. This is the motor bracket. Now every motor calls things different, so we're just kind of getting an idea here, okay? This right here is the transom bracket. Inside of here is your tilt trim hydraulic, your hydraulics for your tilt trim. Your rams, call them rams, on there. And the motor, tilt trim motor, and there's a reservoir in there as well, okay? Now this part of the motor here, this section of, of it, from the power head down to the lower unit is the midsection. Obviously, as I said, this is the lower unit or the gear case, both terms work, gear case or lower unit. Inside of there is the water pump. This is the water pump intake right here. So this is your intake. Sometimes they have them on the cone as well. This one just has them right here. Sometimes they have them hidden up here in smaller motors. This right here, this is gonna make you a genius versus everybody else. This is not a cavitation plate. Everybody calls it cavitation plate. This is actually called an anti-ventilation plate. That allows, because when you suck air in, that's called ventilating, okay? A lot of people call it cavitating. Cavitating is a different thing. Cavitating happens on the prop. Ventilating is where you suck air into the prop and it doesn't allow the boat to grab as much water and it makes it rev up real loud. This is the anti-ventilation plate. This is where the water stays below and then on this side it's dry usually, okay? This is the skeg, S-K-E-G, I think, skeg. This is your prop shaft here. Obviously we don't have a prop on here at this point. Power head is the engine part up here. This is the cowling, this cover is the cowling, upper cowling, lower cowling. This is your power tilt trim switch, trim switch. Motor mount, motor side trim switch. Uh, let's see, exhaust comes out of the center of the prop. So this is the exhaust port right here. Exhaust comes out here. This little tiny tell tell. Let's just show it on here. It's easier to see on the, on the kicker motor here. This right here, one of them's a drain. The other one is called a tell tell. It shoots water out of it. The water pump pumps water up from the from the body of water the motor's in. That's why you have to run the motor or have the motors in the water when they're running. This will spray out water. It's called a telltale, T-E-L dash T-E-L, telltale. And that's telling you that there's water going through the power head. Cowling latch. That latch is a cowling latch. That's the cowling. This is the lower cowling, midsection. This is an extension right here for to make it. There, you have two, you have three different sizes, normal sizes of, of transom heights. You have what we call a short. We'll go show it on this boat. We have a short. The transom height is from this top of the transom where the motor hangs all the way to the very bottom of the boat. This one is called a long shaft or a 20 inch transom. So that means that from here to the top of the motor has to match it. So there's three sizes. You have a, a 15 inch transom, which is very rare anymore. It's called a short shaft. Then you go to a long shaft, which is 20 inches. That's this boat right here. Then you go to an extra long shaft, which is that big boat we were just on. And that's an extra long shaft. That's 25 inches. It goes in five inch increments. So each one gets bigger and bigger. And then they do make a 30 inch shaft on some of the bigger motors. They're rare, but they do, they do make it. Um, on the tongue, we didn't have one on that other one. This is called a swing away, break away, or folding tongue on the bow of the motor. See, it folds down and it has a, a pin that goes in there. And then we have, Oh, on the exterior of a boat. We did have the chine, we talked about the chine. That's the edge where it transitions. Right here, this is the chine. It extends all the way down the boat. It's where the two pieces come together. That's the chine of the boat. Down the center, right here, goes all the way down. That's the keel. 
K-E-E-L, keel, runs all the way the length of the boat. Um, you know the bow, I hope, by now. This right here is just the windshield stop. A lot of people are like, what is this thing? It's a windshield stop. The windshield opens and hits that so it doesn't break and fall into the glass. These right here, there's two different ones. This here is a chine guide. We call it a chine guide because it hits, the, the, the chines will hit it and slide down in. It's different than a load guide or a guide bunk. There's a lot of different words, we don't use them. There's a guide bunk and a load guide. And I don't see any out here. There's a guide bunk right there on this boat. So that one that goes up on the side, it's carpeted, it's a bunk. So you can call them, you can call them bunk guides. A lot of people will call them, uh, will call them chine guides incorrectly, but they're guides. Some kind of a guide. The other one is a chine guide on the other one. This boat doesn't have them. This on here is called the transducer. This is the transducer, and only if you have a fish finder will you have a transducer. That sends out an echo. It sounds as a sound wave and echoes. Echoes down there, and that's when you're fish finder, your chart plotter, or your multi-function display, depending on what level it's at, um, that's what it displays the sonar function of that is from the transducer. Let's move on up front here. These are transit straps. These straps that you put on there, they're the transom straps. That's what we refer to this. This is the tiller arm on this particular motor. That's the steer it, the shift handle, the tilling, tiller arm. That's the safety lanyard we talked about, the safety lanyard. This is a kicker bracket. Somebody talks about a, a trolling motor bracket. This one's it. This one's welded onto the boat. Some of them mount over onto the back of the boat if they don't have this. Some of them mount to this, to, oh, this is, this is a, uh, um, a deck, a, uh, shoot, you're gonna have to write that one in, Jackson. I forgot what you talk, what these are. This is the obvious one. Uh, we've got, this is a vent. A lot of people ask, what are these things? And they're coming in a few different looking things. This is a fuel vent here. This just lets air come out and into the vent. So that the uh, thing, you gotta make sure those don't get broken off because you get bugs and stuff in your fuel tank if you get those. This stuff likes to hide in there. That one matches prop. I wanted to show you on the prop here. The prop, you have the diameter of the prop, which is all the way across the prop. So if you had a perfect circle around this prop, then that would be your diameter. If you're ever curious about how to get your diameter or know the diameter of a prop you have without the information, you can take the prop off, lay it on, make a mark in the middle to your outside fin, and then take the prop off, measure from the center of the prop, your mark of the prop to the outside of the, the um, fin, and it will give you half of it. You double that and you've got the diameter of the prop. The pitch of the prop is how angled this is right here. You see this angle? So the pitch is, if you were to turn this Say you start at zero here. See, this one's up straight. If you were to turn this prop in like jello, something really thick, you were to turn it one rotation, 100%, 360 degrees, that's how many inches it would move forward, how many inches it would progress forward in a perfect world where there's no slippage, like in water and stuff, it's slipping. But if there was no slippage and it was screwing through something thick, that's how many inches. So if this one right here is a 17 pitch, it means it would move 17 inches forward with one rotation of the prop. It would go forward 17 inches. If it's a 15 inch pitch, it would move 15 inches, which is less. So the lower the pitch, the lower the distance it's gonna go. That means that the motor can run at higher RPMs with a lower one or, or less RPMs. It'll take RPMs away if you go to a higher pitch. It's like gearing up or gearing down. These are your transom eyes. Uh, you've got multiple drains on there. This is just to drain it. Uh, when you have a plastic one, this is actually called a through hole. 
You can do it on all of them. This is called a through hole. Anytime you go through the hole, the hole, the bracketry, the hardware is called the through hole. So if you refer to a through hole, that's anywhere where you're gonna do a, a hardware that goes from the outside to the inside of the boat. Uh, water line, you have your water line. That's how deep the water is. So in this boat, if the water line was right here and you had a through hole, that'd be a below, below water line through hole, above water line through hole. When you go below, you usually want to have a seacon. That's a valve that shuts off water to the boat in case you broke your plumbing inside broke. Well, it wouldn't flood the boat. You could just flip off the lever and it would stop the water from coming in through the bottom of the hole and sinking the boat. Uh, you've got your, over here, this is your drain plug. You have a drain plug, drain, bilge drain. Um, the, uh, the bilge of a boat, let's show you in this boat. The bilge of the boat is the lowest point of the boat internally. This is the bilge right here in this boat. This is not bilge here, not bilge here, bilge here. See that? That's the bilge. So in your lowest point inside the boat. It goes all the way forward as far as the lowest point is in the boat is called the bilge. Okay, and then you have a bilge pump. Typically you'll talk a lot about bilge pumps and the bilge pump is just a pump inside there that ejects water. And if you have an auto bilge pump, that means it has a float of some sort. So when it senses water in there, it'll automatically turn that bilge pump on and eject the water through a tube that goes through a through hole and then the water gets ejected out of the boat. This is an offshore bracket here. Offshore bracket, notice it's not a continuation, so it's not an extended transom. See how it stops and goes up. This is all also considered rigging here. All the wires and lights and everything that go everywhere, that's rigging. Rigging is the, the also the process of doing something. Also another thing to know, on your cereal plate, See, this is your cereal plate. It'll always have the cereal. This is your hole number. Sorry, I'm gonna say cereal plate. Uh, HIN, hole identification number on boats. It's different than a cereal plate on a car. Uh, but, so your hole number is right here. Now, if you look on here, the last two numbers, always on a hole plate, the last two numbers, that's the year of the boat. So this is a tw 2020. That 20 stands for the, the later part of the year. I don't know what we're gonna do when we hit 2021 in, in 80 years. In 80 years, we're gonna get confused. Oh, let's see, clean fat rail, heel rollers, spare tire, your spare tire, spare tire bracket mounts to the trailer. It's not all boats come with spare tires, so the, the bracket that does it, we order those sometimes with a spare tire bracket. Uh, this trailer here is galvanized. If you look at the finish on this, it's 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 galvanized. Most trailers here are because they're steel trailers, but the galvanizing cuts down really uh, cut down highly on the rust. If this were painted, then it'd just be a painted trailer. Galvanized is that color. This right, notice the difference in these two. This this metal right here looks different than this metal here. This is this is steel, but this is called zinc coated steel. Has a little bit of corrosion resistance, but zinc coated steel is not as good as galvanized steel. Galvanized steel will hold up better with zinc coated. These bolts are all zinc coated on here. Zinc coated hardware. And that and that's galvanized. Sometimes you'll have both and then they'll also have stainless steel a lot of times on here too. Uh, so we've got the bow strap down there. Anchor guide up front. And this one does have a definite pulpit. You see that area where the, it comes forward? This is called the bow sprit or the bow pulpit. Well, I think that I think that covers pretty much everything that I wanted to. We'll give a couple of things on the end here. If we if we come up with anything, we'll do another one. I think we got all of it though. Um, for the most part, you know, you get your windshields, you've got your soft tops, your side curtains, your backdrop. Uh, those are all components on the uh, tops there. And uh, for the most part, I think we've got what we call most things on the boat. Obviously it gets more detailed as you go, especially inside the motors and different things, but that usually is um, more or less techni technician type talk. 
at that point, usually customers don't understand that. Uh, you have your water pump, your impeller, they know that a lot of times, but, but uh, for the most part, people don't really go much beyond that. So these are the different things we call things. So if you're a customer or if you're a Marine, marine uh, 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 crew member, then now we know how to refer to them and we can always add to this video uh, the other terms that we find and use as we go over time. But for now, we can just call them these things. I think get away with it for the most part. All righty.